Welcome to Shizitsu Audio. Hello, I'm Morris. I'm going to talk about ports today. That's one exciting subject we're going to share with you. Um, we're diving into the base reflex port design. And also we're going to touch on why do some speakers have punchy bass while others don't. We'll go over the understanding of ports and how the series uh, ports enhance a speaker's performance. Basically, this is about a brief overview of the bass reflex design. It's a popular speaker design for better low frequency performance. Usually the bass reflex design, and I'll get some arguments on this, provides a deeper bass in a smaller enclosure. Generally, that's true. That's why a lot of designers use the bass reflex design. We do use that as well in our little hero. In fact, all our speakers use a bass reflex design, which is the port that I'm going to unwrap here for you. Let's take a look. This is kind of like an unboxing video, but really it is an unbagging video, but that's okay. Let's take a look at the port here. Why is it important to understand ports? Well, they define the base reflex design in that ports are tunable. You can tune them to the enclosure size. So really the enclosure size plus the port length determines the tuning frequency of the speaker. So it allows air movement in and out of the cabinet. The length of the port, as you can see here, can be adjusted in this particular one, um, determines the frequency at which the port enhances the bass response of the bass reflex speaker. We'll go into more details later about what that entails and why it works the way it does. So we'll put that back down here and it produces a deeper, fuller bass. Okay, before we get any further into this speaker design part, let's talk about a key concept here and it's called resonance. What's resonance? It is the tuning frequency of an object. As you see this tuning fork here, tune to, if you can see that, 128 hertz. This tuning fork here is tuned to 384 hertz. Notice the difference of length. The port operates the same way. The shorter the port, the higher the tuning. The longer the port, the lower the tuning. So why is that important? Well, when you have an enclosure this size, for example, which is a fairly small enclosure, you can't tune the port, say at 30 hertz. It won't work because the driver cannot reproduce notes that low in that small of a box. So as the box and the driver get larger, you can tune the port progressively deeper, which means that you can incre increase the length of the port. So that's important. If you extend the port to lower frequency, which is like what a lot of people like to do, you're basically leaving the area where the driver can operate. You're taking it into an area. It just cannot produce meaningful bass. This is the driver we use in the Little Hero speaker. It is a Mark Audio CHR70 wide frequency driver. We use it as the woofer and the speaker. It plays up to somewhere near 2000 Hertz. We have tuned the port at or just above its tuning frequency. Its resonance, which we showed you about the tuning fork, this cone here resonates at its very lowest around 47 Hertz. So if I were to tune this at say 35 Hertz, I can try and reproduce lower bass, but the problem is this little cone here will not go that low. It cuts off at 47. So what we try and do in our products is tune either at the resonance frequency of the driver to give it a boost, or we tune it just above to give it a little more of a boost that kind of rolls off with its natural wall R frequency. Now, how does that impact our bass? The enclosure, the box, 
the speaker and the port tube have to be in conjunction to produce the very deepest space. You can't have, for example, a smaller box with a really big woofer in it and a really long port and try and get yourself into a lower bass frequency. It won't work because the air inside the speaker box will only accommodate so much movement and enhancement of the bass. They have to all be tuned in together. So the real trick here is there are calculators online that will help you calculate the length of the port, the size of the enclosure, and the type of woofer you're putting in it. But here is part of the issue as we call the secret sauce. That's not enough to get you there. You have to be able to put it all together, test it, tune it, because other things come into play. Maybe the driver frequency response wasn't measured color correctly at the factory, or maybe it's just not exactly what they say it is. Maybe the enclosure, when you measured it, you didn't get that exactly right. Maybe the driver, when you put it inside the enclosure, displaces some of the air inside so that actually the enclosure is smaller than you thought it was. So taking all these things into account, including some inevitable leakage from the box, maybe it's around the edge here, maybe it's at the speaker terminals, maybe it's at the screws, all this makes a difference. So you have to be able to get your best shot at it, put it together, play it, measure it, make adjustments. So to sum it all up, it's all about listening. You've got to listen to the product, be sure you got it where you want it. Make sure that the calculations you did are indeed correct and you produce a good product that plays the way you want it to. And that's basically what we call the secret sauce of speaker design.